Good morning, everybody. This is Eureka John with Eureka Street Crypto Hub, broadcasting live on float.app. That's F-L-O-T-E dot app. Um, switching it up this morning. I have been broadcasting live on YouTube for the past week and a half. And before that, I was broadcasting live on Theta Network, but I've been having a lot of buffering issues and issues going on with Theta Network. So I switched to YouTube because it was an easy fix, but I don't really like to broadcast on YouTube because they are the giants, the tech giants. They are the ones that, they're the worst offenders at censorship and uh, they're completely centralized. And as a good crypto citizen, I try to stay decentralized and uncensored as much as possible. Um, so I'm exploring other options and float.app has a live streaming option and uh, you can see right here Let me go to the float.app homepage and uh, Yeah, you can see right here. This is just basically like a Facebook slash Twitter slash you know, uh, Yeah, and uh, it's I, I think they're working towards decentralization I think they will be coming out with a token, but in the meantime, this is the beta um they're getting a lot of stuff together it has bitcoin transaction capability built into it and it's uncensored so um yeah <laughs> and as you can see it has a lot of uh, more libertarian focused type of content on it right now um but uh yeah it's it, if that's <clears throat> but i mean it has a lot of good crypto content as well um you know and um yeah it's it's uh, gonna be an interesting platform i believe and i think they're doing good things as far as um bringing a lot of the amazing functionality that uh facebook and twitter brings without all the uh technocratic overlord type of uh stuff going on over there and all the censorship so anyway yeah i created my profile right here it's eureka john so you can find me at eureka john at float dot app that's f-l-o-t-e dot app um, anyway okay so let's go back over here to the markets and um let's take a look at where we are at coin gecko this oh by the way this is uh it's 7 31 in the morning it's october 2nd 2021 and uh this is my channel eureka street crypto hub and i'm eureka john i do this every single morning and um yeah this is just my video blog and i just document my journey through the crypto space and everything i'm learning i'm not here to shill any products i'm not sponsored by anybody i'm not here as your financial advisor um so don't take anything that I say as financial advice because I'm terrible at finances myself. <clears throat> and then number three, I'm not your teacher. I'm not, this is not some kind of guide or instruction or anything like this. This is just me kind of going over stuff that I'm learning and that's, that's it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> take it for what it is. Um, all right. So apologies aside, um, let's go take a look at Bitcoin here. Um, we have Bitcoin sitting at $47,844 and 37 cents. Uh, everything's looking pretty green. Um, and you know, September is like one of those months, man. And let's take a look here at this past chart. I think I bookmarked it over here on the, the Twitter space. I mean, I do use Twitter, you know, I don't use Facebook anymore, but I don't, yeah, I don't think anybody really uses Facebook anymore as far as, as far as I know, um, except maybe it's just some people that I knew like, you know, ages ago in high school. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, all right. So, um, historical monthly returns of Bitcoin. All right. So let's look down here at September. As you can tell, September has always been kind of crappy. Um, and then even in the years where, um, uh, it was in the green, it was just kind of barely in the green. So, um, yeah, so October looks pretty good historically. And last year it was up 27.9% as a whole. 2017, I mean, that was just, you know, everything was pretty much green that year. But um, yeah. Um, and 2016 was pretty good. 2020 was overall fairly good. Um, so interesting. All right. So um, yeah, September was down 7.34%. So uh, I, I mean, historically, October's um are pretty good so i think we'll be doing pretty well and november as well um so besides 2018 and you know some of 2019 um yeah all right so that being said let's go back over here to coin gecko let's see where ethereum is sitting at three thousand three hundred and seven dollars and 39 cents ethereum has been all over the place the past couple weeks the past week or so i mean i tried to do my first perpetual um <laughs> type of leveraged um, transaction or not transaction, but, uh, you know, uh, 
yeah, whatever they call that. <laughs> See, obviously, I, you don't want to take my financial advice. Anyway, I did this right before it dipped down to 2750 something and my liquidity point was 2788 2788 and so i got liquid you know li liquidated of like $200 but it was my first time ever to do leverage and to try out some of these type of long shorts you know leveraged uh, perpetuals type of stuff i was just kind of playing around with these instruments cuz i believe that you learn by doing and um so I was just, all right, you know, I've read all about these perpetuals and stuff like that. And I've read all about leverage, but I've never really done it. You know, I was like, I don't, it's not really my shtick. I don't really want to do it, but I'll, I'll give it a try just so I can say I've done it and, and to, to learn how it works. And, uh, and I did, I learned how it works, you know, <laughs> so I lost 200 bucks that way. Um, and now I know how perpetuals work. Um, if you, you know, you do a long and I longed at the wrong point because, you know, I'm perpetually bullish on Web 3.0 technology and, you know, blockchain 3.0 technology and all this fourth industrial revolution in a decentralized way. Um, yeah, I'm bullish on it all, you know, long term, but uh, I can't predict short intervals and dips and stuff like that. And I'm not even going to try. So anyway, my first time to try it. Um, I, the market just suddenly dipped out of nowhere and Ethereum just dropped down to 2756. Um, and it was at like 3100 or something whenever I put in. So yeah, who would have thunk, right? Um, anyway, so it just goes to show I don't need to be doing that. Um, so Cardano is at 223, uh, Tether's a stable coin, Binance 426.25, XRP at dollar four, Solana 159.57, Polkadot 32.30. USDC dollar and the Doge at 21 cents. Um, then down here we have Chainlink going up at 26.3 cent, 26.38 up 13.7 percent. And then I wanted to see Theta. I have some Theta news here. So finally, uh, up to six dollars and 23 cents, up 13.5 um, percent in the past 24 hours, probably because of this news. And seven days up 20 percent. So Theta's back on the up and up. Um, I know I'm having streaming issues, but I'm still bullish on Theta because I, there's just so much stuff going on and you know, little old me, it does not matter what's happening with me. So anyway, um, that being said, let's go back in here and some of the stuff I've bookmarked. There's a lot of news and this, today's just going to be kind of a variety show. Uh, hold on, let me check my streaming status and make sure everything is all good there. All right, so, um, all right, live now and I this just to make sure and okay i will keep this chat up and everything like that i know i just want to make sure that uh i don't still bullish on you know because I, there's this okay let me turn down my sound from video there we go all right so uh, last time i kind of created an echo for myself and i'm trying not to do that this time okay so all right all right so let's go over here to my bookmarks um I've been meaning to talk about this. Uh, where are you? Here we are. All right. So Meta Game Hub DAO. And uh, I've created an episode of the Metaverse Think Tank. But anyway, right now they have voting going on for those people holding the Meta Game Hub token. And uh, let's see here. Uh, let's look at this thread here. Just he, Lucas Phillip, he's one of the main guys at uh, Meta Game Hub DAO, says, just voted. If you are an MGH holder, don't miss your chance to vote. It is a crucial part of being member of a DAO. And if you are a member of a DAO, and if you choose to be a member of a DAO, you definitely want to participate in voting because that is a crucial part of being in a DAO. And if you don't know what a DAO is, it's a decentralized autonomous organization. I believe the future are DAOs. Um, it's, you know, there's a time and place for a hierarchy, I guess, for a centralized top-down structure. But uh, a lot of companies are now beginning to explore the concept of DAOs, um, especially in the crypto space. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a way for everybody, a kind of a horizontal organization for everybody to have um, uh, hold tokens and have a vote and what goes on. They're not necessarily shareholders, but they're token holders. And all the uh, the uh, proposals and the changes and the, the structural organization that happens in there gets happen. It happens through voting and, uh, you know. Yeah, and different DAOs are structured different ways. There's a lot of different ways you can approach doing DAOs right now, and a lot of different DAOs are experimenting with different ways of doing DAO. <laughs> so I'm also in the Bankless DAO, and that is one of the biggest DAOs out in, in existence right now. 
and it's fun. It's amazing. I've I met some really cool people through there. Um, not, I haven't met anybody in real life, but uh, um, and I've I've gotten to uh, my show has dramatically improved since I've been in the Bankless DAO because I've gotten in in uh, connected with the the AV Guild there, and I'm you know participating on a daily basis in there and uh, just I've learned from so many other uh, video and audio experts in there and so yeah that's why you've seen so uh, such improvement on my show in the past few months is be I give credit to the Bankless DAO for that and my participation in there and I've gotten involved with some cool projects but anyway so made a game hub DAO um, this is another DAO in which they are all um, it's people here let's go to their website let's take a quick look <clears throat> and uh, they are experimenting with the idea of um, providing virtual real estate and NFT valuation and a way to do that that's um, objective uh, because NFTs are hard to value. How do you value an NFT? An NFT, if you don't know, is a non-fungible token and it's a one-of-a-kind type of item. A lot of times it's been connected with art, but um, you know, it, it can be connected with basically anything that is unique. And in this case, um, a lot of virtual real estate on Sandbox and Decentraland and you know, a, a lot of these other platforms, Somnium Space, Crypto Voxels, a lot of that real estate is becoming very expensive. And this is kind of a way for people to combine together as a DAO and to buy these lands and build them out, um, allow people to build on them, allow advertising to happen on them. And uh, yeah, um, and... So the Mega Meta Game Hub DAO will be responsible for acquiring and curating multiple metaverse related NFTs while allowing its community to collaboratively collaboratively manage them. So it allows anybody to all as a DAO to go into these metaverses to invest and collaboratively manage these uh, properties within the, the metaverses. And uh everybody has their vote if they are an MGH holder. So it's an interesting concept for a DAO. The Meta Game Hub DAO does its utmost efforts to foster the convergence of NFTs, DeFi, AI, and the Metaverse by building an ecosystem of NFT curation and providing the necessary infrastructure to allow collaborative governance and transparent accessibility to the rapidly growing NFT market. Meta Game Hub strives to increase the adoption of NFTs through the implementation of Meta Game Hub DAO, NFT pool, an innovative NFT pool tokens, which track the total value locked in the respective pools. So uh, the, what has made a game hub trying to solve? The current NFT market is lacking key infrastructure in terms of liquidity, pricing, and utility. It is hard to figure out what an NFT is worth. And a lot of people are just poking in the air at it. Um, so um, the, what are these problems? Illiquidity. There's a lack of liquidity in the NFT market that hampers the tradability and accessibility to the unique asset class. A absolutely true. Um, inefficient utilization of NFTs. Majority of NFTs have a limited earning potential. NFTs stored in wallets do not provide additional value until sold for a higher price. Okay. And then inaccurate NFT valuation. Intransparent, inflexible, and fragmented. Emotionally driven due to lack of valuation models. And I think that's absolutely true. Right now, what's going on with all this NFT hype and basically just, you know, tons of artists just dumping their crap into the NFT space and just making anything that they make into an NFT. We're going to have the floor drop out and then, you know, uh, well, I don't know if there is a floor, but we're going to have a lot of these NFTs just being shaken out. And th there's going to be some that stay around, but um, this this will pass. And, you know, it's going to be kind of called the NFT bubble or whatever it is. And, um, yeah, so... Uh, anyway, Meta Game Hub DAO is trying to solve this this issue of valuation, utilization, and illiquidity. So they're providing accessibility to the NFT pools, in which if you buy the Meta Game Hub token, and then you can become a part of that community that invests in these virtual real estate lands and able to build on it as a community. Fractionalization: the NFT pool tokens allow community members to diversify their holdings and gain exposure exposure to multiple virtual worlds. So you you get in these um, these pools and you are allowed to uh, use those tokens to diversify your holdings into various other properties in other virtual worlds. So it's not just, you know, sandbox and it's not just a central land. It's, you, it's, a, it's a multitude of them. So incentivization by staking and providing liquidity made a game hub members 
and NFT holders can generate additional rewards. And then the price of Oracle providing transparent and fair NFT valuation through AI, big data, and smart contracts. And I saw um, how all that, the mechanics of how that pricing Oracle works is beyond the scope of this video, but uh, I think it's a great valuation model for how to value these, these properties within the metaverse. So anyway, that being said, let's go back to this thread here. Um, so attention made a game hub governors. There will be one snapshot vote starting today until the 6th of October. Um, so thread uh, one, the first proposal of made a game hub Dallas to acquire a batch of lands from the sandbox game and start setting the groundworks for Metify. So think of DeFi, this is Metify. Uh, so um, this uh, decentralized finance, this is Metaverse finance. So uh, it's setting the groundwork for it through the first iteration of our NFT pools. All right, so the current virtual real estate market is very inefficient. The pricing of most of the lands being offered on OpenSea is very subjective and not transparent. In this sense, there are no models or benchmarks to determine if the land is over or underpriced. And that's true. You know, you go into OpenSea and you look at all these lands that are available to buy um, on OpenSea and the, it's just all over the place. There's really no rhyme or reason for it. It's just kind of whatever... You know, somebody thinks that somebody might think, yeah, whatever, point, you know, point zero zero five Ethereum and somebody else is like, this land is worth 10 Ethereum. Yeah, anyway, to solve this issue, Made a Game Hub came up with a valuation model that uses on-chain data, a neighboring weighting algorithm, and machine learning methods to find a fair price for the lands being analyzed. And like I said, I've seen this, the mechanics of this model, and it, it I think it's very objective. Um, so, all right, so... <clears throat> um, after screening 1,000 plus lands currently listed on OpenSea, we cherry picked three parcels which are priced below the estimation of the model and are very well located. These lands will then be curated and developed by the Meta Game Hub DAO to create a meeting place for the community, NFT art galleries, games, and much more. More proposals coming soon. The purchased lands will also be the first parcels to be staked in our NFT pools, and this will then allow the users of the Meta Game Hub platform to have exposure to the sandbox ecosystem without owning any lands. All right. Um, so these purchase lands will be the first parcels to be staked in the NFT pools. This will allow the Meta Game Hub platform, uh, the users of it, to have the exposure to the sandbox ecosystem without actually owning the land. So you get ex the exposure to the price action. So um, this is possible thanks to the way the NFT pools work. When a land is locked in the pool, the user mints ERC20 tokens called NFT pool tokens the MPTs is what they're called, that replicate the value of the land being staked in the pool. These tokens can then be freely traded in the market. So in a, in a way, I mean, are they kind of like synthetics? Yeah, um, it sounds like it. Um, the NFT market is currently lacking liquidity and transparency. With the implementation of our pricing algorithm, the NFT pools and the respective MPTs, we thrive to set the groundworks for the metaverse finance and boost the adoption of the metaverse with solid NFT infrastructure. And then here's a link to the document with all the lands that were analyzed with a forecasted price and suggested action. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. And then I will link this thread. Uh, we don't need to be going through that, that spreadsheet right now, but let's take a quick look at this snapshot. And snapshot, if you don't know, is a way that DAOs vote. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a platform that allows DAOs to vote. And uh, I've used Snapshot and Bancor, I've used Snapshot and Bankless, and I've used I've used Snapshot and uh, made a game hub. So um, let's go here and I'm not, I can't remember which wallet I have that uh, has these MGH tokens. Uh, shoot, hold on, let me put in my, my password. All right, so let me unlock my wallet. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so, um, yeah, I can't remember which, which wallet I have that has these in it, but um, I will just try this one and see if I have a winner. Eureka! All right. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so, uh, let's take a look here. Um, let's go in here, and this is how Snapshot works if you're in a DAO, and it basically it just gives me three options, and, and then I get to just cast my vote with the Meta Game Hub tokens that I have, the MGH tokens. And so far, it looks like land one um, is in first place right here, as you can see, with 51.36% of the vote. And it shows all the people who have voted here. Um, I, I voted for land three um, because I, I liked it, I guess, the best. I mean, really, honestly, they, they're they all good choices. Um, I just, yeah. Okay, I'll show you and just so you can kind of see. So OpenSea, 
Dot.io is an NFT marketplace, if you don't know. And uh, there's all types of stuff on here from domain names to art to virtual land. And this little orange box here is one that they're proposing for land one right next to the sandbox. Sandbox owns all these squares. Um, so, you know, and right now the highest offer is 0 0.332, which is $1,000.94. Um, so let's go back into the uh, snapshot. Where'd you go, snapshot? Um, okay. Come on now. Um, man, where? Oh, uh, did it not open and did it? Well, okay, here we go. Uh, all right, so let's go back into here. All right, so let's check out land two. I will open a new tab this time. <laughs> okay, and then I will go ahead and open land three and new tab just so you can see. All right, so um, land two, this one right here, um, this one says make offer. So it's currently not up for sale, I guess. Um, all time average price is 0.4522 Ethereum, so it's a little bit more expensive. And this one um, has some unoccupied neighbors around it, but around here we have the sandbox, we have Atari over here, and uh, several of these others that I don't recognize. But uh, okay, um, and then let's take a look at land three real quick. And let's see 0.9 Ethereum. Uh, two thousand nine hundred and sixty seven dollars and ninety seven cents um and let's see right here this orange square and pong is right here tesla the sandbox um yeah so there's uh, ftx exchange a lot of these it's it's in a nice neighborhood <laughs> so anyway so yeah that's kind of why i voted for land three because of its neighbors around here um and uh yeah i don't know um uh, maybe the kids want to go to a good school <laughs> all right so anyway that's that so you kind of get the idea this is how voting and DAOs work this is part of being in a DAO, and uh yeah if you're going to join a DAO, participate you know vote um jump in and see how you can help don't extract value become value for the DAO, and then you will be rewarded in the end so you know it's just the old same thing thing you know like don't expect a reward going into something a reward will be given to you uh based on what you're able to contribute and uh yeah it might just be you know just like for instance people jump in the bank list down they're like uh what can i do i'm like well you can start by taking notes and meetings and then posting those notes those are helpful meeting notes you know um, i started by just recording the meetings on the recording the audio audio of the discord meetings you know there's a lot of ways you can start contributing and if you just hang around uh, you'll you'll see you know where you can pick up the mop and start cleaning up the the dirty spots you know that's just with anything in life not just dows just hang around and you'll be put to work eventually you know <laughs> so i mean I, even at my old corner store in my old shady neighborhood that i used to live in you know that the, the there was this homeless dude that would always just sit around and hang around on the on the in front of the, the store well the owner didn't call the cops on the guy the owner gave the guy a a broom and just asked him to sweep the front and you know he paid the guy a couple bucks you know for doing that and just keeping the keeping the front clean and hey you know bam <laughs> and so i'm not saying you're a homeless person you know just jumping into that but you'll find something to do the longer you hang around something <laughs> so all right anyway that's enough moral life lessons for right now um let's let's go back um over here and look at some of this other news so here is speaking of nfts twitter um has bragging rights twitter previews verification badge for nft profile so this is really good for ethereum this is really good for NFTs. um twitters will have options to set crypto collectibles as their profile pick to impress everybody and okay i thought this was total b that's like who would sit there and try to use you know, uh, NFTs as clout as so superficial. Uh, I underestimated the superficiality of people and <laughs> and the, the 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 flex that people want to try to. Show. So I mean, I'm talking about it negatively. It is it's just fine. I'm not judging somebody who wants to do that, but uh, um, it just shows. And if people want to flex on their their profiles 
these NFTs and it kind of shows that they're an OG, uh, it shows that they might be into something. I mean, why do people put bumper stickers on the back of their cars? I mean, you know, the yeah, marathon runners, you know, 26.2 or whatever that is, you know, then that the half marathoners and, you know, uh, and, and then you see skateboarders put things on the stickers on the back of their car and it shows that they're a skateboarder, you know, like, I don't know. So Twitter has unveiled an in development tool that will enable users to ver display a verified non fungible token as their profile pick. Um, Mada Aflak, a senior software engineer at Twitter, shared a video demonstrating functionality that allows users to add NFTs to their accounts. Users can simply edit their profile, connect their cryptocurrency wallet, and import their OpenSea collection. And I just showed you OpenSea. Um, then they can choose an avatar from their collection of NFT digital art. The profile pic will also be marked with a badge to verify that the image is the genuine article, thereby allowing users to flex their hugely expensive CryptoPunk or Bored Ape profile pic and have everyone know it's legit. So just when you think that the NFT boom, the fad is going to be over, Twitter goes and does something like this. Now everybody's going to be flexing their NFTs and showing off that they are ahead of the curve, that they are up on everything, and that they have the coolest NFT out there. And now people are going to be willing to pay even more than they've already been paying for these NFTs. By the way, I have a couple NFTs up for sale on OpenSeas.com. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll show them to you eventually. I, you know, so. But anyway, yeah, I've taken photos of some of my old art and uh, I was trying to figure out how to create NFTs. So if you ever wanna buy those, I think they're up for sale on there, I'll have to check. Um, anyway, so Aflac stated that the run through was just an experiment using a mockup. So anything can change. And she called on users to submit feedback and suggestions. Uh, she said, as promised, here's the first experiment. Feedbacks and ideas are welcome. So software engineer, and so here's where, yeah, we're thinking we're working on something we think you'll love. Twitter spaces. Huh, okay. So anyway, with a verified profile pick is generating while the verified profile pick is generating all the excitement so far, Masari research analyst Nason Maestrom speculated on other potential applications of Twitter integrating crypto wallets. Because Twitter also just integrated the strike wallet, which is a, a way to allow for people to tip Bitcoin back and forth to each other. And this has been very bullish. Um, these could include verifying how long a user has owned an asset, recommending followers for other NFT owners, buying and selling directly from Twitter profiles, and creating social graphs of NFT owners. So this is also another way that people are going to begin to start to value NFTs um, for valuation, just like made a game hub. Uh, DAO is solving for land valuation. Um, it's the latest crypto friendly move from Twitter, which last week integrated lightning network payments for, with Twitter profiles, enabling users to send and receive Bitcoin for tips or other payments. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey has been a long supporter of Bitcoin and promoting it via the platform. Dorsey also famously sold the first ever tweet as an NFT. OpenSea saw a gigantic $4 billion worth of sales in August, but sales pulled back in September with around 2.4. 2.45 billion sales in the past 30 days. Well, September was a bad month um, as far as crypto uh, cryptocurrency industry as a whole. So, you know, a lot of people were losing money and were in the red. So they weren't really in the market to go just dump a bunch of money into NFTs. But I think that's going to change with October. And especially now that Twitter is going to be um, allowing verified NFTs as profile picks. Um, this is, I got to hurry up and get some more of my stuff. Maybe you see these uh, these day-to-day -day art things Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday that I'm putting up um, to show the day on my videos. Um, I've made paintings of all those because I make paintings with my kids because they love it. And uh, um, maybe I should take some of these and put them up as NFTs. I mean, they'll be crappy. And look, sat turd. Hey, I mean, they'll be turds, you know, <laughs> but somebody might buy it, you know, and it'll help support the channel, right? I'm not really into bumming money. But um, uh, for to try to get the to keep the channel up because I don't want to be beholden to anybody. But it might be a good way if somebody wants to contribute to the channel, they could buy an NFT um, of these um, day to day art pieces. And uh, yeah, who knows? Um, so I will put those up and uh, we'll see. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, that being said, I think that's enough news for today. Uh, I've gone on 31 minutes. <sighs> It's been an interesting morning. I slept in, or I didn't want to sleep in, but I just laid there for a while. And then I finally decided to get up, and then Theta TV wasn't working for me because I wanted to try Theta TV out again. And then um, I didn't want to go to YouTube, so I did float, but then my two-year-old was pounding at the door. So I had to go and uh, get her occupied. And then I came back down and I restarted the stream. So, yeah. <laughs> 
that's how it goes, man, when you're trying to do this stuff every day. Uh, you know, and the other day I had a failed show. That's why I did 282.5 episode, um, because the audio was off. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. Live and learn, crash and burn. All right. So, um, I also, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I guess today was all about NFT valuation for the most part. And, uh, yeah. So, um, that being said, I will put on the outro. Let me make sure I put on the right outro this time. Um, so let's see here. Let me turn off this reggae music, even though I'm sure you enjoy it every single day. And then put this. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.